And one of the things that you're talking about that's important for people to hear is when you do these endurance sports and, and as you break through 40s and 50s and then you have you have a family uh, and you're trying to balance your training and racing with having a family, I'll often you know, tell tell athletes to to try to incorporate incorporate your family as much as you can. And then you're doing things like building out your home gym. You build out your home gym, whether you got your bike on a trainer, whether you get a treadmill, uh, and that has an effect in that it, it it allows you to cut out travel time to to facilities, travel time to to you know long rides. Cutting out that travel time really, yeah. you know, re- you know, really helps. And you know, you've been mostly a short course athlete, but but folks who who are long course athletes have have difficulty with this because there's a, there's actually an old joke going around social media that you know some for some of the Ironman folks if you make it the race week without getting separated from your 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 uh your spouse or your significant other then you probably didn't train hard enough right <laughs> so People will have, I mean, it's a lot of time away from your family when you're a long course triathlete, you do an Ironman, half Ironman. And you, so you have to find creative ways, whether it be build out your home gym, incorporate your your family, and otherwise, the, you know, the people that you're with really uh, have, have, have a challenging time being away f- from you when you're, you're out going off and doing four hour bike rides, five hour bike rides and really long, you know, long training sessions. So, I mean, that's, you know, have you seen, have you seen yourself, uh, you know, making a lot of uh, some of those changes in in your life now that you're starting to tick up and doing a couple of uh, longer course events? Yeah, I think that, right. The, but the, the, after there's, there's, they always say there's four pieces to triathlon, swim, bike, run, and and nutrition. Mm Mm-hmm. I would say the fifth piece is time management. Yeah. And certainly as I've ramped up to half iron, um, I think the way I can um, manage it from a family perspective is uh, they know that this is a cycle, right? And that there's a time of the year where you're going to be spending more time than others. Right. Uh, And uh, that helps, right? So that it's not something that's continual. And the, the... periodized workouts means that you're not always cranking out eight to 12 hours a week. Mm, yeah. And I think that's educating the family about the process um, is a way of letting them in and having some kind of sense of control over uh, and expectations around the time that you need to be able to do this. Right. And getting buy in too from, you know, getting buy in, buy in from your family and, you know, you know, sort of set the expectation and maybe even come to some, you know, compromises, common ground about, you know, you know, things like, you know, time, how much time that you're going to spend. Uh, maybe, you know, you, you carve out a day, you carve out, carve out a day for the, you know, just them and things like that. And so you've managed to, uh, to do that to to do all of this very well and it's part of the it's part of the equation as you as you age and continue to race continue to train and race and that as we'll you know we'll talk and get into the article but as you as we'll see uh there's there's good some some good reasons that you know, you know people that are are older can can continue to race with well within their fifties and even sixties and, and beyond beyond that. As you've as you've gotten old, older, as you broke through the forties and and into the fifties, do you see changes? So for so for me now, it's different for me now. I, I hardly race anything anymore. I, I basically because any coach will tell you that once once you start coaching, and certainly if you start running a coaching platform yeah uh, you you can't really train as a competitive athlete anymore or or certainly much and so i hardly ever do anything 
competitive competitively anymore. I almost almost universally do do recreational type of uh, you know events. But I I can say that as as I've broken into forties, I I've 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 seen it get slightly more challenging physically and also mentally. And when I was, you know, late twenties, Saturday, Sunday, I would go out and run two hours without even blinking in uh, an eyelash. Go out and run two hours or something like that, or ninety minutes or whatever. And you know, psychologically, it, ju- it just gets harder to do to do that. But also, I realized that it's getting slightly harder to to maintain fitness fitness that I could easily get to without even doing much it's harder to get to that same fitness yeah. now and uh it's it's not that you you, you still you, you can't get there but it's just it's just slightly slightly harder i mean we can run off some statistics about you know which which things drop as you as you get past 45 you know vo2 max lactate threshold uh, lean body mass these, these are all examples of some things that start to diminish um and you know, one of the things that you, did, you talked about is 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 you know race weight. It gets harder. It, it gets harder to get down to quote unquote your your ideal competition weight where you really can excel at at, at a at a certain body composition. There is something to that too, uh, in that you know you know metabolic rate can can drop that as you get older. But I've I've definitely seen seen some of that and ha- have you also seen some of that i have seen some of that tony um and i think my response to it in this past year has been uh and i haven't actually explicitly said this to you but um in the quote-unquote off season mm-hmm. i didn't go as off as i would right and so i i think if you really take to heart an off season for recovery um then the past year I noticed that it was going to take me like three months, right? Before I felt like I was able to recover from off season. (laughs) And so this winter I kept a higher level of base fitness, much higher than I have in the past years. And it's been, um, you know, the, the TSS that I can, right. Can maintain right now. I'm well ahead of where I was last year. Um, not because I'm putting more hours in, in April and June, but because, I've got the the base um, from February and March. Yeah, and that's when it really one of the keys is having a full year approach, right? When you were younger, you you could you could go through the holidays and, and take a couple months off and not do anything and then bounce back. But yeah. but now no. it, it's getting harder to bounce back, and you sort of have to have a year a year round approach. I mean, even for you know younger folks they say you know you, you train and race you should have a year-round approach but it's even more important as you as you get older and, and it just goes back to little things building out your home gym building out you know you know your your fitness regime when you know the weather turns um and and that's it just it just goes to show you how how important that that is and so, I think part of it as you get older, and this is something interesting too, Tony, is that um, <clears throat> I think there's a little bit of a motivator of fear in that, is that can you get back to where you were mm-hmm. as you get older? Uh, and <clears throat> the use it or lose it um, framework right. is that something when you're in your 20s or 30s, you're thinking about it all, right? But you know, there are a couple of t- times where you know, I wake up in the morning and, and after a couple of rest days, I actually feel worse than I have after, you know, I've worked my body hard. Right. And you sort of that, that kind of, I don't know, I'm, I'm confessing here a little bit. To yeah. The, that as being a, a driver in terms of some of the behavioral things that I choose to do. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, let's get into some of this uh, endurance. I think people want to hear. Uh, some of this science about the about about endurance in general, and I I when I saw this article 
it, it just jumped right out at me just because, or this study, I should say, because I've, I've always obviously been an advocate of, of endurance sports. And I think, I think empirically, there, there's a lot of evidence suggesting that if, if you had to choose something to do, endurance sports is what you would do. It, it, it really has the, from an opportunity cost perspective, it's going to give you the biggest bang for the butt, the buck in enhancing your fitness, whether you're not, whether you're an athlete competitive or whether you're just trying to just, just generally stay healthy. Endurance sports are the thing that you should do up and above things like lifting weights and things like yeah. that. And I've, 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 I've said this for years and there's sort of a little battle between the, you know, the strength and conditioning, personal trainer types and, and folks like you and I, or, or what, what is the best thing to do? And I think the, I, I could, you know, demonstrate empirically that, that hands down, you're, if you're an endurance athlete, you, you swim, bike, run, and, and especially in, into your later stages in life, you're going to get the biggest bang for buck uh, on 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 general fitness. And so, um, now surely I'm going to you know, probably get in a lot of emails from from those folks saying <laughs> trying to argue that point, but I'd, I'd welcome yeah. it. But I think we, we can we can generally demonstrate this empirically. And then you look at people like Sister Madonna Buter, right? She's the you know the mm-hmm. 82 years old. Yeah, she's the oldest woman who completed the Ironman. Lou Hollander. Yeah, Lou. Lou Hollander, 84, the oldest man to complete complete the, the Ironman. Uh, Ed Whitlock, who, who's passed away recently, uh, 70, 70 year, over 70 years of, of age, did a sub three hour marathon. And then we had Gene Dykes, who, who ended up breaking Ed Whitlock's record over 70 years old did did a sub three hour at marathon uh here are some other examples here join benoit uh, uh, joan benoit samuelson just just in boston this year yeah just this year did a 304 uh marathon and she's 60 62 and then i just saw just recently this guy brad barton 53 did a sub four twenty mile, and uh, that's that's pretty that's pretty amazing, and, and broke the record for for that. So there's all of these examples of people. I mean, these are just isolated ex- examples, but there, there's everybody knows someone who's fifty and even sixty who's really fast and continues to race, continues to do endurance sports, and uh, it. I, I I was used in some of these examples when when people just sort of resigned that oh I'm getting older I'm going to get slower it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to get slower as long as you know what to do 